Welcome to the Road America Circuit for GT2 action from ESR. We have got 15 minutes of qualifying here to bring to you, and then a 60-minute endurance-style race. With me on commentary is, of course, my ever-present wigman, Byron Dirksen. What's up, bitches? And current ESR Zero Championship leader, Paul Riccobeni. Hello, everyone. It's a little hard to follow up after Byron's intro but uh how y'all doing <laughs> and uh we've got some interesting action here from road america for the esr gt2 series which i did bring up before but we're repeating it again just in case someone missed it uh interesting note a number of championship leaders are absent from this race uh darcy parkinson is not here today mr c is not here today so, big chance for a couple of the guys a little bit further down, the Sean Kennys, the Martin Edmondses, the, the Jurgen Walbys of the world, to to make up some ground. And, of course, this man, the Thrustmaster Corvette of Richard DeRoche. Thrustmaster. Interesting possible tire computations here today. There was a lot of different thoughts about what would work. A lot of people starting on hards and then going to the soft tire. Some people going to double softs across the race. I don't know if anyone tried to stretch a single pair of a set of hard tires for the entire race. Uh, if you did, please let us know. Uh, because I figured, unfortunately, mind you, this is, keep in mind, my testing is all with the Cadillac, uh, which is the heaviest tire wear on the planet. But uh, it definitely was a case where, the, where a single set of hards were going to have a hard time going race distance here today. I, uh... I have an idea, but it has nothing to do with racing. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Thrustmaster, and of course my brain goes back to pro wrestling, so I think you and I should don some spangly Star Trooper type outfits and become the Thrustmasters uh, in, in the were, simulated wrestling. I thought we were going to, to a Rhett Titus thing. No, 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 maybe. I mean, he could be your manager, for sure. Feel the thrust of Rhett Titus. Yeah. It's the All Week Express. And of course, uh, we have an addition to the Cadillac Racing Team. Mr. Mike Stopmill from Holland uh, was recently recruited into our ESR Academy and then immediately graduated because he was kicking the crap out of everybody. Uh, and uh, is now up in Division 1 for this race for the Cadillac Racing Team. So Cadillac, for the first time since Monza, has a Division 1 driver. Is that how you pronounce that? I always thought it was Holand. Holand? No. It's Land of Hose. No, no. Is that not correct? All right. It's not correct. The Dutch people would not, would not be particularly uh, particularly in favor of that. If you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. And uh, we ride with Ariel Zatoni of Argentina in the uh, Corvette Racing Corvette. The factory Corvette team. It would be really weird if it was like the Charger racing team of Corvette. That'd be intriguing. Although what's what is weird about the Corvettes while we're while we're on the topic is the fact that the yellow cars are not all Corvette racing. There's another team called La Sabra Comp Competition. La Sombra. It's basically the same liveries. La Sombra. This uh this is the one problem with the GT2 class is a, a general lack of actual liver, livery and color diversity. <laughs> and splittery. That is true. I mean, you got basically yellow for the Corvettes. You got basically... You got a, you got some options for the roughs. They're, they're, they're pretty far out. They've got some interesting stuff. But uh, uh, the Cadillacs are all kind of similar. And uh, then you've got the BMWs, which have a couple of ones that stand out. Darcy Parkinson's Advan car would be a good example of that. Uh... We haven't actually seen it make the grid yet, but Mark Klabzul's BMW Ring Taxi uh, is pretty interesting. It's a yellow and black car. Looks a lot like the like the Corvette cars. I was going to say interesting in as much as he hasn't run anybody off the road with it yet. <laughs> no, no, sir. That's, that's not his stuff. That is semi-BS. <laughs> Ariel Zatoni setting the early pace as he puts up a lap time, and across the line comes John Barker to the top of the timing sheets. And apparently Eric Friesen there in the very rainbow-like BMW you see up ahead uh, also put up a very good lap time there. He is in second place. Great. Now I have a system of it down in my head. Indeed. 
John Spriggs coming across the line in fourth place at a pretty lackluster lap there from Wesley Stokes. He's at the back of the pack. Shot up, Wesley! And now coming around here in his ESR debut, it is Mike Stoffmill, the Dutchman. He's got two purple sectors, four tenths up on the pole. Jurgen Walby has just taken pole as well. And can Stoffmill strike? He can! Cadillac to the top of the timesheets. We yeah, just I can see why a... he graduated the academy. <laughs> can we have a moment to appreciate the fact that there's a gun advertisement in this game? I appreciate that a great deal. Especially well, Henry. Uh, there's a cheese advertisement. There's actually a Corvette was... advertisement if we watch really closely on the track. I might. I appreciate it. We saw the cheese in like the very first frame of the video. That made me giggle a lot. There's but, a Johnsonville thing. I mean, if anybody's interested, uh, y'all can all chip in and get me a nice Henry 4570. I'd, I'd be fine with that. Oh, somebody's off the track. What's going on there? That was me. Well... Uh, myself and another car went side by side through that really fast sweeper, and it was not well advised. Was it clap? It was not clap. Can you prove it? Yeah, I mean, I can provide video evidence if we go back. No, it's boring. Uh, that, that corner that we just went through there actually is called Canada Corner. So, yeah. Whoa. Is it icy? Uh, it feels icy, not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, its name is really just because it is the corner of the track that is closest to Canada. Huh, fair enough. It's the furthest northern point on the circuit. This entire track feels a little icy every time I race it, to be honest. Indeed, uh, that was definitely the thing. People were noting a, a really high level of uh, tire degradation as John Barker there goes third fastest. Uh, actually, I believe that did not better his time. Oh, Wesley's running the hard tires in qualifying. What is... That would explain his lack of pace. He's down in 13th oh. place. That cannot be a good choice. Bit of a... I, I wonder if he's aware that he made that choice. He's sandbagging. He's putting the hards on just to make you guys feel secure, and then he's going to oh. whip your ass. Oh, Joe Racer. There's a bad line. No, Joe Racer. Oh, he's dead. Joe Racer taking a hard <laughs> shot there. Coming across the line is Mike I mean, Stop Mill. He's got a purple second sector and does, in fact, better his time. He is eight, almost nine-tenths up on uh, Jurgen Walby. And it's not really Joe Racer's fault. He's He's been making hand-smoked bacon at home. And, uh, oh, that's true, that's true. That looks he's, delicious. uh, that does look pretty good. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. I could, I could, oh, I, I'll, you know what, uh, 10 or 12 pounds of that, and I'll let you know how good it is. We ride with Martin Edmonds, the, uh, the Sultan of Killing Tires, the master of, uh, rubber suit, as he makes his way through a qualifying lap here. He's got two personal best sectors. Uh, 1.2 off of the pole. Uh, should be able to move him up into the top five and keep his base up. Is it true that Martin uses straight there. poutine for his tires? May have, may have lost it there. I th I'm honestly, I think poutine would get better for what he's got on there. Oh, <laughs> you make the tire out of the cheese curdler and he go to fest in the round the corner. Hmm. Well, let's have a look. See here, he is on to the final straightaway. Uh, looking to improve on his seventh place and coming across the line. Uh, I'm going to say no. Yep, no, no. He definitely did lose it. Actually, only about two tenths off of his overall best time, though. Actually, so not a bad lap. Uh, Has Mike he tried Mike anything McGrackin other than the, in the uh... Cadillac heading there through you go. the last sector of the track as he's looking to better his lap time. He's got two personal best sectors there, and should be able to jump up a couple of spots. We could part him there for John Picha in the Corvette. Doesn't I'd be look... interested. Uh, uh... Oh. Mm -hmm. Very slippery part of the track there. Front end of Mr. Picha has been left in the uh, the tire barrier. Uh, Lucas Bolesky completing a lap here. He's got two personal best laps up there. This is definitely going to improve upon his 10th place, I think. And there he is, up in the ninth. Actually, a very uh, he took a lot of time off, but unfortunately the gap uh, didn't really allow for more than one position. I'd be interested to know if uh, Martin has ever Byron's contemplated. Boy, Joe, Boy, Josiah! Josiah. The on Caribbean the hard, On the hard tires for some odd reason. The tropical storm. I thought Adele was the tropical storm after she defeated Josiah at the Academy race I mean, to open it all up. That's also probably true, yeah. I forgot about that. That will be an ongoing battle, I assume. The, he he could become the tropical depression. 
Oh. The doldrums, Josiah Jerome. Indeed. Josiah, I'm assuming um, these guys are not aware they're on hard tires, right? That I mean, is my guess. I can't think of any strategic reason to go on the hards, although he did just bop himself up into 15th position there. Uh, Andy Blade there in the background in his new livery, the Red Ferrari. Martin Edmonds with a pair of personal bests in the first and second sector. He's behind Andy Blade. Interesting. It would be interesting to see if uh, if Martin ever gets a, like a wheel set up and things and stops nice using jump. the Wiimote. <laughs> nice lap there by Martin. He moves into fifth place. Championship leader Vinny Roberts with La Sabra competition in the Corvette. You can see what I mean there. I was bringing it up earlier. Like, tell me that that doesn't look like a Corvette racing car. Uh, well, yeah, because it looks identical to the other Corvette racing car. Yeah, and it's a La Sabra competition car. Uh, all right. They just, like, get the same fiberglass body from the same people? Well, it's the same car, but I mean, I mean livery-wise. So. I want McDonald's now. That's uh, ad Vinny, excellent advertisement. Well done. Vinny with a uh, purple first sector, so he could have a chance for pull here. He's pushing really hard. Although he's really pushing hard. hard. Yeah, he's, he's lost it. He's, he's yeah. a second off now. Uh, still could have Lighting a top around. five time here, though. Twenty-one cars have now posted laps with uh, Jim uh, James Butler last and like Stoffmill on pole. I believe, Actually, have, I... I believe we have twenty-three cars in the field, if I do recall correctly. I believe it's pronounced James Bootlier. James Bootlier. <laughs> Vinny Roberts coming across the line. Can he improve on his time? He can, as he goes sixth the fastest. Uh, here is the man at the top of the timesheets, Mike Stopmill. Uh, not having a particularly good lap here, so I don't know why we've gone to him, actually. He's almost a full second off his own time. Well, it's because, as you can see, he's clearly racing backwards across the lap just to rub it in everybody's face. <laughs> I, mean, true. I mean, when I say he's a second off, it should be mentioned he's still probably about third fastest even with this lap time right here. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Uh, 1.8, where would that put him? Ah, uh, no, that would put him down. He'd be about 11th place with that laptop. Uh, I noticed still no Lachlan Nichols in this uh, particular thing, so no nickname for him again for the 19th Indeed. week in a row. He, and he said he was showing up to this one, too. Also, I uh, hear he's afraid to do commentary because of his horrible, horrible German accent. I mean, it's possible. We can confirm that Ben Schwari resisted our various efforts to get him to commentary. Correct, even though we told him totally he could drink the entire time. Paul, are you drinking? Uh, it's the only way I'll do this any longer. <laughs> Excellent, well played. Wait, what is, is that a reflection on me? Uh, I've learned from the best, Byron. Excellent. Ex uh, I have a damn it, Mike, stop teaching him me. things. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I just said I have a gallon of vodka sitting next to me right now. Sweet. I, I yeah. hate to bring I hate to bring things back to the matter of hand, but Vinny Roberts what? has got a pretty good lap here. He's only yeah. a half second off the pole. Could Vincenzo. be a start. Go Vincenzo. He, he is on a good one here. Looks like he's really fast in that first. Please excuse the beep in the background. Beep. And he's coming across the line. Has he held it together for a very solid lap? He really could use a good result here today to take advantage of some of his rivals being absent. There he is! To the front row he goes. By just one hundredth of a second over Jurgen Wolby. <laughs> but the class of the field and, and rubbing it in with oh. two purple sectors. Jesus Mike Christ. Mike Stopnell. <laughs> Somebody's been hitting that grape track. Indeed, here he comes. Uh, not a lot of time left, so you got to be pretty much heading towards the finish line right now if you want your lap to count. He comes across the line, and we do not know if he bettered his time. He is on pole. From Vinnie Roberts, Jurgen Walby, Sean Kenny, John Barker, Eric Friesen, John Sprague, Richard Roche, Martin Edmonds, Andy Blade, Ariel Zatoni, Lucas Valeski, Dennis Meister, Joe Racer, Scott Nick, Wesley Stokes, Mike McCracken, Josiah Jerome, Jesse Hampton, John Picha, and bringing up the back, we have James Butler. 
first position. <laughs> I demand that you, you refer to yourself in the third person for the rest of the commentary. I usually do. No, I mean even while doing commentary, as a commentator. Oh. Well, that I don't know what you do. That's just silly. <laughs> Fuck you! Alright, so we're seeing the choices here. Looks like Martin Edmonds is going with the hard tires to start the race for P9. Uh, that's probably advisable for those who, of course, know of our running tradition in ESR that Martin Edmonds will murder the tires. Has Remember, kids. Remember, kids. P9 way different than P Nuss. That's true. Hashtag remember, remember Martin's tires. Hashtag pray for Martin's tires. <laughs> And we are waiting for Martin to join the grid here as he's being uh, presumably one of the last guys to get actually out there and onto the grid. He is a lazy, lazy Frenchman. I don't, I don't think the French heritage has anything to do with it. Uh, you say that. But uh, we all there know that you're Paul is prejudiced. 23 cars on the grid, two of which did not qualify. Those are Guillaume Brisset and Luciano Ichazo, who are starting at the back of the pack. And we're off. Uh, various degrees of success there on the start. Lots of people moving around. It looks like Mike Stoppel has retained the lead. Victor Walby is moving into second place ahead of Vinny Roberts. Uh, Sean Kenny on the hard tires there in fourth place. Your boy, Sean Kenny. Sean Red Letter Kenny. Indeed. A nice clean start from everyone. Yeah. It uh, looks like. Uh, I say Josiah Jerome, perhaps getting the worst of the bunch. He slipped back to 20th place. Uh, probably the best start going to Guillaume Brisset, who's up from 22nd to 19th. You have failed to entertain me with your horrible starts, which didn't happen. <laughs> Jurgen Walby is on the soft tires. We don't know what Mike Stockville has elected to start this race on. So that'll be, of course, the interesting thing, because there's going to be a mix of softs and hards out here right now. And then further complicated by the fact that some of the hards might be trying to stretch their tires the whole race. Some of the hards, uh, like McGracken, for example, are intending to pit and put soft tires on for the last stint. That is a semi-serious question. Has anybody ever figured out how to layer these tires? On so you, like, you start off on like a layer of soft and it goes into hard after it? Uh, that is not possible to do in the game, and that's not possible to do in real life. I that sounds like nobody's heard of laminating before. Mm, that, would be that worked on short bows, and the Mongols conquered most of the world. I do have some minor gripes with the game as far as tires are concerned, it should be mentioned. Uh, the fact that you cannot, uh, for example, hit and get two new sauce for your front without changing the hards on the back. Uh, to me, I think that that's a bit of an oversight in the pit stop uh, routine. But it should also be mentioned that multiple tire compounds are something relatively new to race rooms, so perhaps given time, they will fix the problem. As an awesome April Fool's joke, I think they should have the pit crew uh, refuse to change the tires, and then you just have to run on rims. And, and not only that, but the pit crew flips you off. Fuck you. Uh, looks like something has happened to James Butler. He's falling well off of the pack at this point, 13 plus seconds behind Luciano Chazzo. Uh, so some contact at some point that we didn't get a good look at. We are one lap done. Uh, Mike Stoffmill leading from Jurgen Walby. Uh, Vinnie Roberts, Sean Kenny, and Martin Edmonds up into fifth place ahead of Eric Friesen and John Parker. Richard Rose, John Spriggs, and Scott Nick, the debutant, uh, rounding off the top ten. Interestingly enough, uh, Division Three Championship leader Cristiano Pinheiro is absent today. That means a big opportunity for the uh, the D3 dudes who have shown up to make up some significant ground. Uh, what about D4? Uh, there is no. Wait, wrong. That's me. Well, it's that you're not wrong on that, actually. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the only D the, the current reigning defending D4 champion of the world. Right here. By Dixon. Can't be stopped. Can't be started either. John, uh, John Spriggs on the hard tires to start the race for BMW Motorsports. 
And uh, you can see the new livery there of Andy Blade there in the red Ferrari. He is swapped from the, uh, the Lotus uh, named car. And it looks like Martin Edmonds has picked up some damage. I see a missing bumper on his front end. Heck. So that's bad news for the Canadian early on. He's going to slide out of the top 10 pretty quickly. I'd imagine Richard Roche has just made his way through. I'm trying to figure out who he may have had contact with. Um, not I didn't see anyone. anything in the background. Yeah, I'm not seeing anyone particularly out of position, so maybe a solo accident for Mark Nettons on this one. There he is, dropping back as he probably heads for the pit lane. Sir, if we could keep the solo accidents to a minimum and do so in the privacy of your own home. I mean, come on. Should be mentioned that uh, Mike Stockmill has not really managed to pull away at the front. He's only about a half second up on uh, Jurgen Walby, despite having out qualified by the field by almost a full second. And in the background there, Andy Blade is on the attack against John Spriggs. I do like that Ferrari livery, though. Yeah, it's very nice. I'd say, all the, I'd say all the Ferrari liveries are pretty nice. Ah, oh, some headlight flashing from Eric Fries, and he wants Sean Kenny out of the way. I would headlight flash continually. Is there a way, is there a setting you could just, like, put your blinkers on permanent? Uh, you would have to press the button. Oh, well, I would totally go out of my way to do that. Yeah. Flash, 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 fuck off! Uh, Dennis Meichner is <laughs> having a good fight there with uh, Andy Blade, and just ahead of them, the identical car of Scott Nick having a good fight with John Spriggs. Didn't know that uh, Scott Nick and Andy Blade were big Stampeders fans. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Scott Nick has no idea what that is. That's true, and yet uh, I'm going to accuse him of racism anyway. I mean, I'd say Dennis Meister might be your senior problem. I mean, his flag even matches the standard. <laughs> that is possibly true, yes. Interesting that the two Advan cars, the two identical liveries of Scott Nick and Dennis Meister, pretty much occupying the same spot in the field. And Sean Kenny has dropped behind Richard Roche now, so the hard tires really working out for the Ferrari. Uh, I should mention, uh, I was talking with Sean Kenny a little bit about the P45. Uh, cup oh, oh. Uh, don't get air. I play something <laughs> John Spriggs uh, taking a trip across the grass. If he was uh, under the Mexican flag, I'd make all kinds of insensitive jokes right now. Juan Deere jokes? Could be. Top three have kind of gotten away here. Mike Stoppel, Jurgen Wolby, and uh, Vincenzo Roberts. Uh, you're leading three. Uh, actually, all representing different cars. So we have a Cadillac leading from a BMW, leading from a Corvette. That is, of course, where the uh, the duplication uh, or the uniqueness ends, because fourth place is occupied by Eric Friesen's BMW. So, two, three, Vinny Roberts going for a move here on your <laughs> Uh Mr. Paul Riccobeni, as you have a great deal more experience being a championship leader than I, which is uh, <laughs> basically none, uh, what would be your approach if you were Vinny Roberts in this race, knowing that a lot of your main competition are not here today? Do you, do you push hard, or do you just look at it to secure a top five, top ten result, and, you know, taking pure profit? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you want to take uh, as many points as possible. I mean, it looks like his car is um, dialed in pretty well. So, obviously, he's going to want to lease a podium. Um, early in the race, feeling good. I would push as hard as I can, just making sure I don't do anything too stupid. But there's no reason. I mean, he's definitely going to... I can tell you that, at the very least. Um, he's driving aggressively, but controlled. So... You know, there's no reason to back off just because your opponents aren't here. Take as many points as you get when you're there. Indeed, there you have zero leader Paul Rick Benny. How to defend your championship? Now, if only I could do what I'm what I'm telling him to do. <laughs> uh, you've got a pretty solid lead in the championship still. Uh, Dennis yeah. Meister looking to make a move here on Andy Blade. Hey, congratulations to Dennis Meister running in the top ten uh, in his ESR uh, GT2 debut. As you were uh, talking, I came up with a... I noticed that Wesley is driving essentially the Porsche version of Her Herbie the Love Bug. He's, he's got that livery on there. That's true. So, ladies, if you really want to stoke up the love machine... <laughs> 
Uh, Richard DeRoche trying to make his way through the field. It's been a bit of a disappointing season for Richard DeRoche so far. Uh, normally a man who's used to being mixing it up at the front, and his results have not really matched that for the Thrustmaster team. I, I noticed that Felipe Fejea has not shown up just so he doesn't embarrass the new guy. We are, in fact, down. Mr. Felipe Fejea, the flying lizard, is not uh, yeah. present here today. Uh, we have the other championship leader, of course, in the field is uh, Guillaume Brisset, Guillotine Brisket, who's down in uh, <laughs> 21st position. Oh, man, I want to go at Brisket right now. Uh, looks like Martin Edmonds has rejoined in 22nd. We didn't really uh, we didn't really get around to uh, mentioning that. He's some 45 seconds behind 21st place. Uh, James Butler at the back of the pack has obviously also had a pit stop of his own. Uh, to possibly repair some damage to his uh, BMW. Uh, Lucas Molesky in a good fight here with Ariel Zatoni. These two seem to find each other on the track a lot of the time, these two Corvettes. I'd like to send a special shout-out to Martin Edmonds. Happy birthday, and uh, why the hell are you so old? Uh, this is Martin Edmonds' birthday, that is correct. Technically, it's still his birthday. I don't he know is, how he uh, is. He is currently, uh, I hear from the people on the street, that he may or may not be at least 67 years old. I know that he is older than me, because he always tells me that I'm so young when I turned 32 last month. <laughs> mm, that is young. And uh, Richard DeRoche still on the attack here against Eric Friesen. Will the top three have uh, kind of spread out? Looks like Vinnie Roberts has lost the back end of Jurgen Walby at some point. And uh, is about th four -ish seconds behind second place now. Word. Must be said that there are there. This is a pretty weak outing from the RUF team, which has their top car in thirteenth position. Uh, that being Wesley Stokes. I'm uh, really surprised at the um. The lack of speed in the roughs. I did some testing a few weeks ago in um, all five cars, and I, I find that car is just so easy to drive. It was, I thought, the Unlike most the easy Corvette, to drive. Unlike the Corvette, which to me yeah. is almost <laughs> impossible. Speaking of Corvettes, a little touchy-touchy feely-feely going on there. Yeah, Ariel Zatoni and Lucas Molesky getting into it, and both of them getting passed by the rough of Wesley Stokes. Mutually assured destruction. Indeed. I would say the... The roughs have had a bit of an up and down season. Like they, they, they definitely require the Greek uh, assistance, as it were. Uh, and with uh, Mr. Parginos and Mr. Uh, Papi Mihail missing, they, they definitely have lost some of their teeth. Mm. Parginos, 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 Parginos. Yeah. There you go. At, at least that's what my Greek friend tells me. I got a second pronunciation from another Greek guy, so I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, wonder, I'm wondering if there's some multiple options here that would uh, uh, that would generally work. Damn, mycelians. Maybe maybe some kind of uh, regional differential. That's probably true. I mean, it's all it's all water off a goat's back. <laughs> uh, Vinny Roberts is really not able to stick with Jurgen Walby, so it looks like this may be a two horse race for the win. But there is 47 minutes left to go. There is a pit stop left to go. Dennis Meister and Dennis. Andy Blade are going side by side. Him. And Dennis has got the move done and is up into eighth place. Doing the Academy proud. I know Dennis from uh, a little while back. I think he's going to find his speed. He's newer to the race room um, series. I think uh, over the next couple of weeks, months, he's going to be uh, quickly moving his way up towards the front of the pack. I think uh, I, I think uh, that I wouldn't be surprised at all. He recently won the zero uh, uh, reverse grid race at Sonoma, uh, becoming yes. the second Audi driver to notch up a victory this season, and making Audi the dominant brand in the zero championship. Oh, Audi! Uh, and he's definitely got the speed. I think it's just a matter of getting the consistency and putting together some of the uh, some of the racecraft issues. Uh, he. You may remember from the ESR Invitational when he first came to our attention, uh, was definitely a guy who could be seen off the track fairly often. <laughs> um, oh, Brendan Hicardo, <laughs> nice fake! Uh, oh, Richard, you son of a bitch, race goddamn 
spectator shit. Richard DeRoche getting up into fourth place, and I must say it's very it. distressing that Sean Kenny has got John Barker on his tail because Barker is rocking those hard tires, and we saw earlier that Sean is on the softs. And I don't give a shit about any of that. You, did you see that fake? I did. There was a beautiful move by Richard DeRoche. In the that was fantastic. Grande Ricardo. Mwah. Boy bueno. There you go. I'm diving. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, no real gaps opening up in the top 20 or so, except for the gap between uh, John, P uh, John Picha and... Uh, Josiah Jerome, which is up to about 10 seconds. Uh, that's a Peaches bit of a come there. from a can. They were put there by a man. Da -da 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 -da. John Barker with the move on Sean Kenny. Oh, I'm, I'm incorrect in saying Sean Kenny is actually on the hard tires. Okay, so I was uh, casting some, some false information there about uh, some of the trouble he may be in. Sir, I don't know uh, how else to tell you this, but Sean Kenny is always on the hard stuff. Probably true. Probably true. Uh, I was talking with Sean Kenny about the P45 competition zone, which is the Ferrari knockoff that he's driving there, and he was he was saying that he thinks that it's a strong car on a light fuel load, but that when it's heavy, it's noticeably a, a problem uh, compared to the other cars. Uh, I personally haven't done any fuel tank testing on it. Uh, have you done anything in that regard, Paul? And that I was just going to say the Kenny? same thing. I've only driven it with uh, the default 50 liters, and uh, it just feels wrong. I actually like the feel <laughs> of the car. I just hate that cockpit. Eh, I, I like the sound of it. I think I like it until I crash, usually on my second lap out on it. And then I just go back to either the Porsche or, or um, the BMW, which really is, to me, the, the best car in this, this grouping. It's just so playful, but yet controllable. I really think the BMW has a beautiful balance to it. Mm-hmm. Although the strongest placed car at the moment is the Ferraris, they're currently in 7th and ninth, which gives them an average position of 8th. Hmm. And, uh, that's... I guess that's the advantage of only having two cars, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are only two Cadillacs, but unfortunately one is back in 20th position. <laughs> Tis what she proclaimed. Indeed. Uh, so Eric Friesen's running the hards. Have we seen what Richard Roche is running? Is he running the hards or the sops? He's running one of each. Because I believe the top three are all running the soft tires. Uh, so it be interesting to know which of these is the highest placed uh, car on the hards. Richard losing control and off the track a little bit there. Uh, we've also, Vin we've Roberts. lost Vinny Roberts. Vinny Roberts? What? Is he in the pits or? Vincenzo. Yeah. Vinny Roberts has dropped to 22nd position. Uh, he can't be in the pits. The timing screen doesn't really uh, equate to the gap working. He must have gone off somewhere along the line. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. But suddenly, this has become a battle for the podium between Eric yeah. Friesen and Richard Roche. That's a huge hit. We were just having a discussion earlier about taking advantage of the points, but... That's... Uh... Uh... Listen, you got to be be honest with me. Is there a, an invisible clap on this track that may or may not have taken Vinny out? There is no invisible crop. Don't lie to me now. Sir, sir, if there was an invisible clap on this track, would Mike McGracken still be running in this race? Uh, maybe. Because... <laughs> I assure you that an invisible clap is a heat-seeking missile. Let's, okay, Mr. now, all right. So the fact that Andy is still up in eighth place means there's no invisible clap. That's <laughs> that's just how that is. I was talking with Andy the other day. I, I would there, say there was some, more, there was some more there's no invisible uh, Yevgeny Lazarenko. <laughs> hey! Can we like commentate on a... Can we commentate on a straight-up clap versus Yevgeny match? I mean, if you want to arrange such a thing, I'd be down for it. One on one. One on one. No, they'd be boring. They'd put each other on the wall, like, right off the first corner. <laughs> it'd be really short. <laughs> it'd be... I mean, maybe that'd be... We, we could just speculate from there on out. And uh, Richard DeRoche is still putting the pressure on Eric Friesen, uh, looking for that second place position. Friesen's on the, hot uh, on the hard tires, so if he could stay ahead of Richard... 
Uh, he'll either have the shorter pit stop or the ability to run fresher tires at the end, which I think would work out to his advantage. Uh, in the meantime, just looking down the uh, the the uh, the standings here to see if anyone's particularly uh, on a charge. Uh, doesn't look like anyone is. I'll say uh, someone is falling back, and that's Jesse Hampton, who's dropped down to 18th position there in the RUF Porsche. Uh, one of the one of the men who I think will benefit from the Division Three standings today, because the top two men in Division Three. Cristiano Pinheiro and Noel Robbins are both missing. So third place Jesse Hampton has got a chance to make up some big ground. Meantime, DeRoche still putting the pressure on Eric Friesen in this battle. Uh, gentlemen, I, I, the highly polarizing car of Eric Friesen, your thoughts on that particular livery? Spectacular. Uh, it's Byron not for me. It's not for Paul Riccobay. <laughs> it looks like somebody vomited on it from 20 feet out as he hit him at 120 miles an hour. I love it. Uh, that is a great description of it, and yet oh, I do oh, not baby. like it. Richard DeRoche looking Look to make that. another good move, and he's oh, through. Oh, oh freezing. Nice. Oh, Eric hello. loses control. And Andy Blade is still fighting with Dennis Meissner over 7th place. Dennis Meissner having a hell of a race. I would say he's one of my drivers of the day right now. They've got Eric is, uh, up ahead of them. The one thing i got to know right now is, is this... We were told that a certain thing may or may not have happened at some point, and I don't think it's ever going to be on camera. Mm -hmm. oh, Did that oh, happen? I think Whoa. Blade Meissner... Oh. Andy Blade with a little Looks contact like on the back lost, end of Meissner. Uh, the rear end. Yeah. That's typical, Blade. We were just... We, we put the caster's curse on him. By the way, uh, we, we've been talking a lot about the consistency of people. Lucas Molesky up into the top ten just by just being there. Just by being the dude. Uh, Luciano Echazzo's having a pretty good race. He's He started dead last and has made his way up into 14th. Well, I mean, it's because Andy Blade's really bad at racing. I mean, that's part of the problem. <laughs> What, at some point, he's going to fucking ban me from Discord. It's going to be great. <laughs> I mean, um, and by great, I mean kind of like, oh. Uh, Wesley Stokes up into the top ten, so the Porsches do have a top ten car now. Hey, all right. Old man on the back, Porsche. Sean Kenny looking to put the pressure on John Barker. A battle between the Division Two leader, Mr. Barker, in this race, and uh, Kenny who is trying to make up a lot of ground in the championship. And again, with the retirement of Vinnie Roberts, uh, he's kind of in the Vinnie Roberts mm -hmm. spot now, where a good result here for Sean Kenny can do his championship hopes a load of good. And speaking of Vincenzo Herb Roberto, uh, we were told that he did a 360 in the pit lane. I don't think it's going to be on camera, but uh, I'm no, going to mention that, it. That, that was Mr. Sean Kenny. Who was it Sean Kenny? Oh, Sean Kenny. Hi, uh, Kenny, Vinny, Kenny, Vinny. <laughs> Somebody on track. Indeed, the guy. Sean, indeed, Sean Kenny would like it noted, for the record, that he does a 360 in his pit stop. Fair enough. So that pit stop has not happened yet. I don't know where I got hung up on that one, but I thought maybe at some point Vinny had done oh, the, the thing. Lucas oh, Lucas Pileski off the track. Right, no guess. No no guess. guess. Collision Lucas. between Joe Racer uh, further back and John Spriggs. Uh, what a mess. Like, oh, looks like Dennis oh Meissner might have been caught up in that as well. Oh lord, it's Pandelirium. I thought we'd be killed or even worse. And uh, Dennis Meister versus Andy Blade <laughs> resumes. <laughs> lord have mercy. Only now for 13th position. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Jurgen Wolby sticking more or less in striking distance, mm -hmm. but two seconds back of Mike Stoffmill. So. He's been there the whole time. That guy has not moved. I mean, you can take that two different ways. A, he's not been fast enough to catch uh, Michael Stomfil, but uh, Stoffmill. I got my my uh, consonants wrong. But uh, he's not being left behind at any point. That's very true. And Luciano Echazzo now up to 12th position. So he's made up uh, 11 spots over the course of this race. Jürgen Das Boot Walby. And he's now working on Mr. John Spriggs, who... 
uh, is a man who probably can't be very happy running outside the top 10. He was very, very fast in practice. Uh, didn't really translate to qualifying and hasn't really translated to the race. Well, maybe if he tried pushing the gas pedal. I mean, I'm sure he is doing that. Oh, okay. Now that would be my BMW livery. Kind of plain, don't you think? I love it. Simple. Looks like mustard. I suppose. Uh, mine would be the uh, the Advan car that Dennis Meishner is running, uh, as well as Scott Nick. Uh, if uh, if that comes onto screen at any point, the the red and black one. Yeah, there in the background. right in the background there. Yeah, yeah that one there. That would you, be my choice. Because it's Swiss. It's it's not. <laughs> it's got a stripe up the middle and a stripe across the top of the windscreen. That, that's, that's it's Andy, Swiss. That's Andy's car. Oh well, I don't care. <laughs> go Andy, go. Uh. The other one would be uh, possibly the BMW Ring Taxi. I'm a big fan of that one as well. I demand that everybody I'm drive. also a very big fan of this livery here that Jesse Hampton is racing in the uh, the RUF Porsche there. Yeah, I agree. That's... It stands out in this field. I think it's the only blue car on track, actually. I like it. I think we should have a uh, London Black Taxi race. I smell three wide coming up here. Yep. Andy Blade is looking for a way around. Luciano Achazo is looking for a way around. John Spriggs might be just in survival mode right now. <laughs> should be mentioned, we're approaching... We're a little over 25 minutes into the race. This is where the soft should probably be dropping off for the drivers who have elected to start on the soft tires. Myself and Andy Blade did a relatively extensive tire testing session, which Byron was a part of, unwillingly. Uh, I know. Got Dude, I could have left it any time. It got, it got hit with a lot of numbers. <laughs> a lot. Listen, I don't know if you have such a dim view of my mental acumen, but two is not a lot, okay? There, there was more than two. I only had you tracking two for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Luciano made a mistake there, and it opened the door for Andy Blade, but he has successfully defended, and the man who's profiting off of this is Dennis Meissner, the Academy driver on the charge once again, trying to make his way up in the grid. By the way, the other Academy drivers in the field, for those who are interested in such things, are Jesse Hampton, John Pachea, Josiah Jerome, and James Butler. I have a, I have a nickname for just the livery of Andy Blade's car. Is it the Swiss car? Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> since it's clearly Swiss in origin, it is now the Neutralizer. Ah, I like that. I imagine Andy would like that as well. Yeah. Well, that's uh, my boy Dominic at work. He's a, a Swiss extraction, and I call him the neutralizer all the time. Indeed, indeed. Especially because he gets hurt in ball hockey frequently, like badly. Like, I'm assuming so did you get neutralized again this weekend? <laughs> I'm assuming that you're that as a racing fan, Mr. Paul Riccobeni, you are familiar with the deal with this particular knockoff Ferrari. Uh, yeah, I believe this is, um, oh, is it a 430? It is, that is what... a 430, yes. I believe that's it, right? And then, uh, tweaked and improved, supposedly. I don't know about the improvement, but it has been run in races by the, uh, the Glicker House, uh, racing team, which is the name of the particular, uh, businessman who, uh, requested that it be made. Yeah, he still drives it on the road today. Mm-hmm. Um, I, heard, Just, I was under the impression that they did uh, pretty intensive um, changes to the car. It started out as a 430, and then it went through oh, over, yeah, it, almost it's a complete overhaul. It's, it's definitely its own thing at this point. Yeah. Uh, interesting note. Joe Racer, who is running in the top 10, is back down to 17th position. So something has happened there to the RWL uh, Racing Corvette. is back scrapping with Mike McGracken and Josiah Jerome from uh, Division 3. Sean Kenny running in fourth position. It looks like Eric Friesen is falling back. I am going to... Eh, I was going to say a pit stop maybe, but he's not falling back anymore. So I think Eric Friesen has at some point made a mistake. Uh, we have seen Mike Stoffmill go into the pit lane, I believe. He is no longer leading the race. Correct. Jurgen Walby, Joe Racer going off the track there and allowing this fight for 17th between Mike McGracken and Josiah Jerome to move up a spot. Pull a breaky. Yeah, Stop Mill has dropped back down to seventh position. I do believe he has pitted. Uh, 
uh, and that is the reason for the drop in position. Mike McGrackage short a tail light there. He's been in the wars at some point. At what point was that? He said, asking you to break kayfabe. Lap one. <laughs> it looks like he's missing more than a tail light. Yeah, I just noticed that I was missing the rear bumper as well on that Cadillac. It's all right. Weighs seventy three thousand pounds. It'll keep going. It is. I tested that car. It's heavy. It doesn't turn well. It brakes terribly, and yet I was fastest in it out of all the ones I tested. <laughs> it's all about El Momentumo. It actually, as far as cornering is concerned, the Cadillac has a bizarre skill at cor cornering. If you, if you get the zone just right, with the braking and such, it actually is very good in a corner. But it it just has a it has a very very minimal uh, safety zone. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Uh, Lucas but the sweet Mule spot is very small. Yeah, Lucas Lucas Molesky moving past Ariel is it. Uh, Zatoni, after Zatoni had a little bit of an off there. Uh, those two, once again, scrapping in what has been pretty much a, um, pretty much a season-long battle between those two. The La Sombre, the La Sabre, uh, competition car and the Corvette racing car. Or no, they might be both Corvette racing, actually. I have a question that is semi-salient to the actual, me not, just not Saying random bullshit. Uh, Ariel Zatoni heading into the pit lane as oh, well see, as uh, Luciano Ichazo. Uh, but continue have, with your question. I, I have one. Fi I have a question. Finally, that may pertinently relate to racing. Is like, oh no, it's gonna talk over you. <laughs> uh, why? Okay, so I see Ferrari all the time. Like you got, you got your boy Schumacher, famously, like Ferrari rules the world. Mm -hmm. But Lamborghini, not. I never hear about Lamborghini in racing. Why Why is that? Lamborghini has never been particularly involved in Formula One, which is the most talked about form of racing. Uh, hence Michael Schumacher, uh, Formula One world champion seven times. Uh, Lamborghini has, for whatever reason, never really been involved. They have periodically appeared as a, uh, a uh, supplier of engines. Uh, most Recently, I want to say in the early 90s with the LaRouche team, uh, Scott Nick picking up a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Scott so, uh, Nick, you dirty whore. Uh, but uh, Lamborghini has been involved in, has been involved and just hasn't had any success, I think is what it comes down to. Uh, they attempts... haven't, it seems like they haven't tried. Yeah, I would say that they definitely haven't put the money into it. And I think what it comes down to is they just don't necessarily have the financial resources that Ferrari does. Like, you would think they do because they're a supercar manufacturer, and that's a big deal, and it takes a lot of money to buy a Lamborghini. Yeah. But in terms, of the, in terms of the scale of the operation, it's just not at Ferrari's level. Like if you is, look it, at, is it kind of like the, the Apple? Apple can't be seen as anything other than, like, the premier uh, whatever it is of the top, so they don't even try? Something like that, I think. Lamborghini has never really been interested in selling mass quantities of cars. Like, they want, you yeah. see a Lamborghini, you go, oh god, my dick is all no, the way hard. I mean, like, it's, yeah, all the way hard. I mean, I'm having hard, I'm having a trouble uh, replacing pants because my zipper explodes. Yeah. Uh, Jurgen Walby, by the way, working his way through the grid there. Nice work by him. He's up to fifth place once again. Well, what's oh, the average good? cost of a season of F1 uh, for one F1 car? I mean, what kind of money are you talking about? We are talking billions of dollars, frankly, um, when it comes down to it. Uh, the reason that Ferrari has been so involved in Formula 1, because that's, that's something I think is a bit of a misnomer as far as Ferrari is concerned, that they're just, that they're, they're in kind of this weird place where they're kind of a unique thing in the auto world. And that is, they're a supercar company that actually specializes in relatively high volume sales. And that's something that no other supercar company, be it Lamborghini or Bugatti or uh, Venturini mm -hmm. or uh, Maserati, ever really do. It's a very weird yeah, place I mean, they're in. Ferrari's got like the, the Panamera, the California. They've got like, 
Yes, we make we make the Ferrari, we make the, the high end go very fast, but we also make the GT. We uh, we make uh, you know you can you can drive these around, and it's it's. Uh, I think the only person, uh, the only person, <laughs> the only company that does more of an outreach to, I'm not even going to say the common person, because if you own one of these things, you're not the average dude. In terms of financials, you're totally an average dude if you buy one. <laughs> but, I mean, Porsche, Porsche is the only other company I know yeah, that will I, sell I, I cars say... to people. I would say Ferrari and Porsche are your, your closest to actual uh, competitors. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Porsche sells cars to people that happen to have some more money. Mm -hmm. And then there's Ferrari, and then after that, there's Lamborghini. Uh, mm -hmm. or, and or Zonda. Zonda would be another exa example, yes. Yeah. I would like to see a Zonda uh, car. Looks like uh, one of the Corvettes heading to the pit lane. That's Lucas Malevsky. Uh, although to, to highlight the fact that Lamborghini does have some success when it comes to um, racing, they are they do have a very successful sports car program. Uh, mm -hmm. What is called GT Racing, which is what we're watching here right now, actually. Uh, they have a very successful GT3 car known as the Lamborghini Huracan, which has won a couple of titles mm -hmm. against uh, Mirko Bortolotti and does quite well. Andy Blade Andy tried to go move. up the inside of John no, Blades there for no, sixth happen. place. Not gonna happen, he's terrible. And uh, Dennis Meister <laughs> may be licking his lips at this point, just going, guys, you, you just want to touch <laughs> a little bit. You just want to get close. <laughs> you want to make love to your mama. Uh-oh. And, uh, things get nudgy, nudgy. Spriggs goes a bit wide there. Oh, he threw it down. <laughs> That's <laughs> what is happening, guys. This could Lead be up the gun to the gas pedal. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's very close. <laughs> it looks like Andy Blade is going to hold the spot. Nothing wow. changes in terms of standings, mm. but oh boy, that was oh, that close. was fun. Tantalizing. That was fun. We're oh, still we're still waiting for pit stops from these cars, so the standings are a little bit mixed up. John Barker currently is your race leader. That will not stay that that way. As he somebody has to make a pit stop. Somebody put an aerial ad about there. That would be a cool car to race. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I would love that. You'd have you to wear two helmets, though. Uh, that is in a couple of racing simulators, but unfortunately, Race Room is not one of them. God damn it, Race Room. Uh, Luciano, Hold your shit together. Luciano, I'm you, Byron. Would I would get in an Adam League in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I don't even drive, and I would do that. Which is the get? That's the get. All right. What? <laughs> it died. What happened? Well, you blew out the clutch. Ariel Zatoni, a little bit of uh, grass cutting there for a moment as he he's trying to make his way back through the, through the grid with Wesley Stokes there with him. Uh, Luciano Ichazo is putting the pressure on Martin Edmonds. Edmonds at this point has not pitted for tires and fuel. He has pitted for damage repair. And again, as we've been kind of joking this whole time, one would think those tires have seen better days on Martin's BMW right now. I assume he's gotten used to driving um, basically on the rims, though, at this point, so... <laughs> yeah, we've we proposed a couple of times that we need to get a crew chief, like, mod for him, because he finds it annoying that it's always bugging him about tires. We should just have it replaced with, There's still rubber there, keep pushing! <laughs> My team be working on the railroad, drive the car on the rim... Mike Stop Mill making his move. way through the grid here as he passes Eric Friesen. Uh, interesting that he's passing Eric Friesen and Friesen is not pitted. Uh, because Friesen was, before this whole pit stop thing, a, a borderline, if not top five car. So, I mean, that's the dominance we're seeing from Stop Mill right now. Uh, Andy Blade rejoining the race from the pit lane there. Uh, interesting enough, he's rejoining behind Luciano Ichazo, who I thought was uh, behind him at the before the pit stops. Uh, Ichazo's still trying to find a way past Martin Edmonds, who has worked his way back up into 11th place. Andy Blade parked up right behind them. I thought of a nickname for Lucas, but I don't know which way he leans. Being Polish, not sure which way he leans on the religious angle, mm -hmm. so I'll reserve that until I find out. Uh, that that would be a good call. Uh, Wesley Stokes going a little bit slowly there as he loses a spot to Ariel Zatoni. 
Wonder what happened there. Must have been some kind of mistake. Uh, yeah, he just let him right by. Yeah. And uh, Martin Edmonds is still showing you that defensive driving. Despite the tires being theoretically gone, uh, he is still holding off Luciano Echazo. Just give him a little Andy, bump. And the fresh rubber of Andy Blade's Ferrari. He doesn't seem to be sliding around or out of control on him. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job. And he's actually more or less sticking with uh, Lucas Malewski, who is the car up there in the uh, the additional Corvette there in 10th place. Actually, it looks like Lucas, who has pitted and gotten new rubbers, actually going a little bit more all over the place than Martin is. We have 21 minutes uh, remaining in this race, so about a third of the race to go. Uh, John Barker, who uh, is still in the lead. This is Jerome Josiah. He is yet to pit. Division 3 driver currently running in 8th place, doing a fantastic job. And let's see if Martin goes to the pit lane this time. No, he does not. Still running on those hard tires. Taking them deep into the race. Double J, I want pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> Any chance he'll do the full race on sauce without changing? Uh, he's on hard, so definitely, definitely not sauce. Someone has pitted uh, from in front of them because uh, they've been promoted up to ninth and tenth. I'm not sure who has gone into the pit. Could lane. be Meisner. Somebody could be. Could have been Dennis Meisner. Yeah. That's a possibility. I ain't good at math, but nine seconds seems like a uh, bigger gap than everybody else. Could be Dennis Meisner who went in the pit lane there. Martin's still looking for a way around. Martin actually on the attack against Molesky, so yeah, he's still got life in those tires, despite having been racing on them for over 40 minutes at this point. See his partially damaged front end from his earlier collision. Luciano, my parent, my grandparents did not show up in Argentina at 1945. Echazo. <laughs> uh, Luciano Echazo was going up the inside there, and looks like he's got it done against Martin Edmonds. In the meantime, uh, Jurgen Walby here working some lap traffic. He's in uh, third place. It looks like the pit stops have gone very poorly for him because Mike Stopmill, who's now on your screen, has definitely pulled away from Walby and is. Uh, Screw waiting for the pit stops to be complete. The Dutchman is back out in front. <laughs> and it's a Chazo versus Malewski. I think uh, Malewski is not getting good tire life as Luciano forces his way up into ninth, into, uh, ninth place. And uh, this is starting to become a bit of a train here that Molesky was forming behind him because Andy Blade's up on the back of this as well as Ariel Zatoni and Wesley Stokes in the... So many yellow Corvettes. Yeah. Uh, Molesky has pitted, so he's got relatively fresh tires. I'm not sure what's going on here. Just completely out of the zone after his pit stop, it seems. Now, Ariel Zatoni's gotten past Andy Blade and is very interested in getting past Martin Edmund, uh, uh, Edmonds at this uh, this juncture. Edmonds still has to pit of this group. Well, I shouldn't say has to pit, but it's unlikely he has enough fuel to go to the end. Fanatec Club Sport Edition BMW, which is no longer available in the store, unfortunately. Fanatec? What? Fanatec. That's a lot of yellow. That's a lot of yellow. Makes me want a hot dog. All that mustard. <laughs> little chunk of onion. Little white car here and there. <laughs> mm, hot dog, onion, jalapeno, mustard. Yeah, boy. Like the worst sounding hot dog ever. <laughs> you suck ass. Uh, Mike Stoffville kind of leaving Sean Kenny for dead at this point. Oh, Andy Bleed that. looks like he just spun around. Yeah, Andy have a, had a spin around there. You spin me right round, Andy, right round. Looks like he has rejoined the racetrack, having lost spots to Dennis. Oh, Ariel Zatoni off as well. Uh, Andy Blade appears to have maybe rejoined. 
Joy? No, Andy Blade is still dropping like a stone. I think something is broken on the car. Uh, Wesley Stokes appears to have gone off as well. Okay. Didn't look uh, like he contacted anything, Andy. Uh, James Butler uh, running, running around in 21st position. Sands a rear bumper. And there is Wesley Stokes who's running behind Andy Blade. These two went off. And I don't really know why. Looks like Andy uh, had a moment and Wesley was unable to stay on the track and avoid contact. They Obviously, they were attacked by Gila monsters from the fourth dimension and they had to go off the track. And uh, as a running theme here, the Porsche is down in 16th and 17th place. Uh, once again, not having a great race. I like this theme. Ladies and gentlemen, Wesley love my chain stalks. Further back, we have lost two cars. We lost uh, Guillaume Brisse at some point. Uh, do not know what happened there. And of course, I think it's safe to say that now 11 laps down, we lost Vinny Roberts, though he did not uh, see why. No. Vincenzo, don't leave me here like this. <laughs> So the, we've lost the Division 1 and 3 champ points leaders. And the Division 3 leader is not here. So this is chaos in the standings right now. <laughs> but Division 4 is still going strong. Yes. Who's the Division 2 leader? Uh, that was Brise. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Andy, Blade, Andy Blade off the track again. He's he is obviously... He has definitely damaged that car. He is obviously drunk as hell. Uh, Martin Edmonds, against all thoughts, all ideas, has now gone over 45 minutes on this set of tires and is still in 11th place. That don't make no kind of sense. I mean, it should say like UH for ultra hards at this point. Pretty much. I think at this point it's the cast iron at a great tire. I think he's just rolling on big old wheels of cement. Ariel Zatoni is eager to get around him, but has not found a way through. It's easy. You put the the right uh, right front bumper to his left rear bumper, and you just keep on going. <laughs> Push the pass. Push the pass, Pud's face. No, wait, that's, that's different. Uh, someone coming out of the pit lane there in the background. That's John Spriggs rejoining the track from his pit stop. Luciano, currently best mustard car, OP. You are correct. Hey, Lucha. Ariel Zatoni once again trying to get past Martin Edmonds, who's now up in the top 10, officially with the pit stop of Spriggs. Luciano Carbonera Ichazo. Uh, trying to figure out real quick who's not in. I believe we're still waiting on a pit stop from Sean Kenny. Uh, Josiah Jerome, who's in seventh place, is definitely not going to get it. Uh, but I think those are probably the only two at this point. I think so. Tony just got past uh, Martin. It looks like he did, and it looks like we may have lost Andy Blade. Uh, he's dropping back, so it looks like he has parked the Ferrari. It's probably just a booze break. He'll be back. Finished, like, 19th. Uh, Jorgen Wolby. Um... In a bit of an interesting predicament is Jorgen. Like, he's he is six seconds, basically, behind Mike Stockmill. Sean Kenny, he's not really racing with, because Sean's still got a pit. What would be your approach here, Paul? Do you, do you believe you could make a run for the win still, or does that appear to be out of the way? Although, well, he kind of makes it academic, because he breezes past Sean Kenny, and will now try to hunt down the Dutch race leader. Yeah, I mean... Uh... I don't know, you know, the lap times of while he's been running, but stop meals just look amazingly fast today. So unless I think I have a few tenths per lap on a guy, I'm certainly not going to throw my uh, race away for a few extra points. I would just keep a nice steady pace, collect my second, and, uh, you know, move on to next week. Indeed. Still plenty of races to go in the GT Championship, and it's pretty tight up front. No one's really run away with it, so 
Just securing so, so, solid result after solid results key. I mean, case absolutely. in point, case in point, Vinny Roberts entered today as the championship leader with zero wins to his name. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy to think that you need to look. We all want to win, great to win, but you don't need to win every race to win a championship. I mean, um, consistency almost always the more important aspect for your points total. Um, it's it's so easy though once you're on the track and you know to make a, a silly move when you know you're pushing too hard. But if you can race smart, it really pays off at the end of the season. Uh, Ariel Zatoni getting past his arch nemesis Lucas Molesky there for ninth place uh, in the Battle of the Two Corvettes, and Dennis Meichner is up on the tail of Wesley Stokes there in the Battle for Thirteenth. I mean, if, uh, to possibly even put a finer point on it, uh, you're currently battling, you of course are currently the Zero Racing League uh, leader. And your main rival at this point is uh, Simeon Neca, who has, <laughs> yes. z has zero wins to his name. And not even a tremendously large number of podiums to his name, just consistently picking off high, relatively high points paying positions. Yeah, he's been doing uh, superb this season. He's playing it smart. He's uh, got some great finishes. Um, I had, you know, one win, and uh, oh, I just saw a 360 in the background. Did anybody Sean, see that? Sean Kenny whoop, whoop. going around in the background. Whoop, whoop. It's not over the police. But, uh, but yeah, to your point, you know, I had um, last weekend at uh, Sonoma, the world's worst racetrack that I hope burns to the ground. Um, a terrible weekend. I should have collected a bunch of points, and I think I ended up with like 14 points over two races. Yeah, it was not this, a good, not a good race for you, and uh, not a particularly good one for me. Although it's been not a particularly good season for me. <laughs> Can you uh, ever remember anybody in like a real racing championship never winning a, a race yet placing? Like, did anybody ever win a championship never winning a race or uh, anything like that? It's possible it's happened in sports cars. The lowest number of wins a Formula One champion has ever had is one. Oh. Uh, 1982 KK Rosberg. KK Downing. Won the championship on one win. And a bizarre season that had uh, a, a record-setting number of winners in uh, F1 with... Uh, I know Dieter uh, Peroni won that season, John Watson. Uh, I I bo if I recall correctly, 11 different drivers winning races that season. That seems kind of nuts. That's amazing. In Formula 1, that's amazing. Sean Kenny, by the way, we got a shot there. He he spun in the pits and he appears to have no front end. So <laughs> things have gotten really complicated for Mr. Kenny, who is still running in fifth place, so good points on offer. But uh, a car that has seen better days... How exactly does one do a complete 360 in the pits? I don't know. You have to ask Sean Kenny. It's a reverse J turn, like a glove. <laughs> uh, Ariel Zatoni, now that he's gotten clear of Lucas Malewski, is quickly caught up to uh, Luciano Ichazo, and uh, he would uh, he feels like he would like that top uh, that top mustard spot as you have, as you guys have dubbed it. <laughs> mm, the grainiest of mustards. So it's a battle of Argentinians here, Ichazo versus Zatoni. User, your channel timed out. Oh, Paul gone. We have unfortunately lost Paul Riccobeni for the remainder of this particular... Uh, he is he is texting me on Discord. Apparently he says that it's a complete power outage at his place. I don't want to be uh, the guy that says that, but uh, I will be <laughs> the bearer of Paul's. <laughs> Also, I totally want to buy a fucking gun now. God damn it, Henry. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! I, God damn it, Henry. I want to buy a gun now, you asshole. I do feel the need to interrupt. Martin Edmonds is finally in the pit lane for his tire change. <laughs> Lord have mercy. He's only got 18 seconds left. And it looks like Ariel Zatoni has gotten the job done against Luciano Ichazo and has taken 8th position. Correct. Ichazo down to ninth place. And, uh... We are, I believe, at the end of the pit stops. Martin was the last one, I think. Oh, no, I mean, correct. Josiah Jerome, who's running in seventh place, is yet to it. The Tropical Depression. The Tropical Depression is... He's gone a long way, man. He's, he's at 53 minutes of driving. 
and uh, has not hit the pits yet. He's very depressed. Uh, got a couple of pretty good battles raging throughout the field, although none of uh, particular concern. Uh, Ichazo is still close to Zitoni, but uh, is dropping back. Uh, Molesky is <laughs> catching him a little bit. <laughs> And I don't work for nobody but Stokes. <laughs> oh, someone off the track there, Scott. Hello. Nick, uh, moving through, moving through. That was Lucas Bolesky who was off the track. No, uh, Lucas, I had a nickname for you and everything. The Polish, uh, Polish uh, Lancer. That's what all I got for you now. You could just say the Polish Hammer, it's okay, or the Polish Power. Hmm. Those have all been used before, but I had a better one. And, I mean, depending on how stringently Polish he is, I mean, they've been banned from performing in their home, co home country. That's oh, all I'm going to say. Okay, okay. There, there may or may not be a Polish band that's been banned from performing in Poland because there, of there reasons. There is more than one of them, sadly. Is there? I didn't... I, well, the only one I'm aware of is Lucas the Behemoth Malewski. Uh, Josiah Jerome in the pit lanes. So he is the last one to pit. Uh, and is dropping down. Now Ariel's and Tony running in seventh place. This turned into a good little result for him. Scott Nick up in the top five, or top ten once again in ninth place. Good work. Well, Scott Nick good. has Nick the top ten. Indeed. Lucas Bolesky in the top ten, despite the off we saw there. Although he is under pressure from Dennis Meissner. Uh, Wesley Stokes is the top... Uh, Porsche driver. The Porsches have kind of come through the grid again. Wesley Stokes up to 12. Je uh, Jesse Hampton is into 13th. Mike Stopmill is in the pits again. And what? Jurgen Walby is taking the lead. I don't know what is the deal with this, but Stopmill pitting for a second time. There's only five. There's not even five minutes left. I have a suspicion on the matter. Walby had gotten very close to him. I'm wondering if the Cadillac team has made a fuel miscalculation. Uh, maybe. Uh, in the meantime, Dennis Meissner bowling his way up into, fifth, up into the top ten. Sean Kenny there running with no front end, as you can see. Uh, still running in fifth place and seemingly still has the pace. Honestly, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you right now. I can't tell if they're missing the front end or not. <laughs> I really I really don't can't can't tell. Like if one of the mustard cars was missing that whole bumper section. I could totally, I could see that and understand what's going on. Well, next time Sean Kenny's up there, you'll note that he has a very black front end now instead of his usual. His whole car's black. No, it's very yellow. That's not true. Mike Stopmill drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. This race is is turning into a nightmare for the Dutchman. Dun, 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 dun. In the meantime, in the, for in the, in the meantime, Jurgen Wolby is is in in the lead. 41 seconds ahead of oh, Richard DeRoche. Your boy p -Meal has fucking sped in the pits. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's going to create a rash if you go too fast in the pits. <laughs> just, just, just no. It's just a no. Wesley Stokes putting the pressure on uh, Lucas Molesky, who's lost his top 10 spot to Dennis Meichner and uh, might be losing another one here to Wesley Stokes. The love machine. Stokes. I doing good work here in the late race on the soft tire. Damn you, Henry USA. I want to buy a lever action gun right now. Mm. You have not lived until you've fired, rapid fired a lever action rifle. Should be mentioned, we have a pretty close battle here from 11th downwards. Uh, Malevsky, then Stokes, Hampton, Jero uh, pardon me, Jerome is where the cutoff is. There's been a pretty good battle going on for 14th place with Jerome Martin Edmonds, Joe Racer, Mike McCracken, all pretty uh, close together there. I still think it would be hilarious to have yourself refer to yourself as in the third person the entire time we the do commentary the and in race. The McCracken says. Exactly. You have to become the Rock, but more more Slav. <laughs> more Slav than the Rock. You have to man. you have to literally stand up, stand on your chair, squat back down, and then do commentary. While wearing Adidas. All right. Or so Puma. Puma's acceptable. You can see the Puma car actually of Eric Friesen there in the background. Puma, you can Puma. see where I, what I mean. It's black in the front and yellow in the back right now. Don't make me laugh. I'm going to Puma pants. 
Uh, Wesley Stokes still looking for a way around Lucas Bolesky, who's had a bit of a weird second section to this race, to be honest. Um, he climbed pretty well after the pit stop and then suddenly just lost pace, regained that pace, and has now lost it again. Uh, perhaps just some bad tire management from the Corvette driver. But uh, it has opened the door for Wesley Stokes to get a top 10 for Porsche. Oh. Martin keeps threatening to mail me a wheel to get me to drive in races. A, uh, Logitech Momo, to be specific. Yeah, no, that's a bad idea on all fronts, because if that ever happens, I will practice just hard enough to be just good enough to pit maneuver everybody up to his position. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you've been, dude, you got like 18 penalties in one race. And? And? I, I personally, personally, I'm disappointed I didn't get 20. <laughs> I was going for an even 20. <laughs> you motherfuckers have two short races. Let's go for two hours. <laughs> See how many pits I can get. <laughs> and Wesley Stokes still trying to find his way up there. Uh, further back, uh, Josiah Jerome has uh, climbed up to 13th place. He is still ahead of Martin Edmonds, doing a fantastic job for the Academy Division Three. Dennis Meissner, in a late charge here, is overtaking uh, Luciano Ichazo. And you can see the continual battle there between... Uh, you gotta wonder, some of these cars, I feel, might have made some fuel mileage errors. We saw Mike Stockmill have to make an additional pit stop earlier on. By the way, Mike Stockmill out of the race in 20th position. We are 19 Whoa. remaining. Looks like the he wall of Looks like he is retired following the speeding pit lane penalty. Wesley Stokes has still got the pressure on Lucas Malewski. We're down to 19 cars. The Wallaby is hopping himself towards victory. It, I, I would say he's pretty much got it. He's got a 44 second lead over Richard DeRoche <laughs> at this point. He's got 29 lap lead. We are officially... Oh! Whoa! Molesky off! Oh my off. god, what the fuck? Molesky off, but he held it! He kept it from ending up... Uh, really parked the power the of Satan preserves you. Uh, Luciano Echazzo also losing a spot there to Wesley Stokes. I think Echazzo is out of gas. I was going to say I have uh, full... I, I was going to say earlier, <laughs> but I didn't have an interjection point that I have full confidence in the love machine to thrust himself into the top ten. I think Echazo is out of gas. It's the only thing that explains his current lack of pace. I mean, other than that, the only other option with the engine might be gone. Is that a thing? Uh, you can blow an engine up. Would, can you try not to do that? Probably would be the best, uh, speaking, best avenue. Speaking of a guy who might also be out of gas, I think Josiah Jerome has been plummeting lately, and he may also have made that same mistake. Mm. You can see Echazo getting overtaken by Jesse Hampton there. Uh, dropping to 12th place. He's still running, but he's definitely in fuel saving mode or a damaged engine. He's got no pace. Well, as you can see, there are several holes through his uh, bonnet where, uh, you know, the pistons have exploded vertically. Quite possible. Also, the, ca the crayon vomit car currently kicking the shit out of anybody who isn't in the top uh, five. He just took fourth place away from John Barker, actually. He he shit. He is on the charge. Sean Kenny, despite the missing front end, is still on the podium. Crayon vomit. Crayon vomit. Uh, it looks it looks like Josiah <laughs> Jerome has run out of out of fuel. He's dropping like a stone. You you guys at home can't tell, but I just made Mike laugh. That's why he paused. <laughs> and the behemoth. We, we do have a race winner. It's Jurgen Walby. As people are crossing the finish line to take the checkered flag, I think Richard DeRoche is also done. I think Sean Kenny might be done. No, red, red letter Kenny. In third place. He's got podium. Again, uh, a, a request out there for the, uh, the, ra the race spectator guys. A little checkered flag next to people who are finished. Yeah. That would be very helpful. That would be great. 
in the meantime, Mike McGracken has made up a couple of positions here at the end. He's up into 14th and chasing down Joe Racer. I, I am unfamiliar with this Racer. What can you tell me about him? About Joe Racer? No. Oh, you mean Mike Mike McGracken? Yes. He is a... Uh, oh, he's a fucking stunt machine. Oh, that does <laughs> His favorite uh, favorite beverage is uh, sleepless. Uh, he's a big mm. fan of asparagus and Brussels sprouts. I made asparagus for uh, and, lunch today. Uh, and we have reached the end of the race with Jurgen Walby as your winner from Richard Roche, Sean Kenny, Eric Friesen, John Barker, Scott, Nick, Ariel Zatoni, Dennis Meissner, Wesley Stokes, and Lucas Molesky. That is your top ten. Tune in again next week when I share asparagus recipes with Mike McGracken in the third person. Uh, your divisional winners are Walby, Barker, and Hampton. Jesse Hampton there in 11th place. Hampton races, sing this song, do da, do da. Uh, Martin Edmonds, despite the first race, the first uh, lap incident, is uh, has put, pulled a pretty respectable 12th place home, actually. One lap down, unfortunately. And uh, after all that, your top finishing Cadillac is Mike McGracken in 14th position after the dominant display of Mike Stoffmill before uh, encountering some fuel mileage pe uh, problems. Indeed. Uh, special shout out and high five to our technologically uh, damaged brethren, Pablo. Indeed. Paul Rick Benny, who is no longer with us. A moment of silence. R.I.P. We will be at you next time with some zero racing action from Hockenheim. Uh, a track that you have actually replicated in, uh, in uh, Trackmania. Indeed, anybody wants to play some track mania, I have some tracks. It it functions on a certain level. It does. It does. It's very good actually. I really like that one. Hilarious and entertaining and gratifying. Thank you. <laughs> and that will be the Zero series with GT3 cars. We also have the Academy coming up as well as more GT2 action here as March kicks off. Tune in in 72 weeks from now when we play GT97. <laughs> We will hit you next time. I'm Mike, he's Byron, and uh, we'll have a third man in the booth. Don't know who that is at this time.